What a bizarre lifestyle choice. <laughs> Want to know what it's like to live in a place? We're going to show you how. This is it, the moment you have all been waiting for, a full Prius tour. Day 99 of our trip. We only have one more day left, and somehow time got away from us, so we never filmed this. So we're somewhere in Rhode Island in the middle of October filming this for you. A lot of people spend a lot of time on their van builds or their car builds. We spent three days. I didn't even know how to edit at the time, but we took a Thanksgiving turkey cutter cut a mattress we bought on Amazon, gave everything to Goodwill, sold a bunch of stuff to our friends at work, and everything that couldn't fit in the car, we got rid of. Yeah. So we literally have everything we own in this vehicle, except for one scrapbook and one box of Taylor Swift memorabilia. This is a 2014 Toyota Prius. It currently has 120,000 miles on it. We put 14,000 miles <laughs> on it, and we plan on selling it tomorrow yeah. <laughs> we didn't want to make any major modifications it's an absolute zero build everything yeah. that we did you can do and replicate on your own and i would say that we did own a couple things from before like we had one solar generator but we only spent four to six hundred dollars on yeah. the supplies that we needed and we'll break down kind of those costs in this video where we spent that money and kind of show you how we decided to go about it without building anything one of the reasons we decided to try out Prius camping is because gas prices are so expensive. We actually own an RV that gets seven and a half miles per gallon. This thing, we just finished our trip. We got 41.3 fully loaded. So affordability was a big reason that we decided to try this out. We've always lived in smaller houses. We lived in one bedroom apartments. We lived in studios. We lived in a motorhome. So downsizing much smaller wasn't a huge step for us. When we first started this trip, we thought we were gonna last two or three weeks. We weren't even sure we were gonna get all the way through California. My best friend lives in San Francisco and we were like, if we can make it from San Diego to San Francisco, we'll have our, made our money's worth. Now here we are, we've done 22 states and provinces, two countries. Eight national parks. We only spent 14 days outside of the Prius, a couple nights at friends' houses, a couple nights in a hotel when we went to Disney World. There's not a lot out there on people living in their Prius. Well, two people living in their Prius. There's a few videos of like bigger vehicles. In today's video, we are gonna show you how we set everything up, what it looks like when it's in driving mode, sleeping mode, and, and everything we own. Tour starts now. now. We're currently in driving mode, so we're gonna show you what it's like to go from driving mode to sleeping mode. This typically happens simultaneously. Brandon and I split up, we each do our own side, and then we meet back together to help each other at the end. So my side's the passenger side. I take care of everything on this side that goes from the back into the front. First things first, my seat slides all the way forward. We store a lot of clothes in the pillows behind my seat, so all of those are gonna go in the front seat now. I will put our windshield cover on. This is probably the most frustrating thing of the whole process. I hate this electric motor because it goes so slow. Most of the time, we'll just toss the pillows up here. Those are neatly tucked behind my seat. This is my blanket. Brandon hasn't needed a big blanket yet, so he just uses the sheet. I fold this and just hang it over my side door. Our butane stove. We have some backup shoes stored underneath this back seat. Alyssa has her hair straightener, and we have this picnic blanket that our friend Kate gave us that we kind of just stashed down there. So these backpacks, 
uh, are just basically our towels, our shower gear, our toiletries and things like that. So when we go to Pet Fitness, we just grab these bags, we take them inside super quick and everything goes back in there when we're done. And those also go on my side. Living in such a small space, you learn like your muscle memory learns where everything goes and where everything is, how to get in, how to get out, those sort of nuances. Everything must have a place. So that was like a really important like staying organized part. We go with the two cooler system. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend these because they don't keep everything as cold as I would like it to, but for the size and the fit in the back, what we're going to use them for right now, they're perfect. We use one typically for drinks or backup ice, and then we have another one with cold food as well. Mine's empty right now, so it's not a big deal, but when it's full, Brandon usually has to do both. And then this is our utensils, our coffee cups, and our paper towels. It goes right on top so that it sits level. This has our mosquito net that sometimes goes on the outside, a uh, tarp just in case, and then some laundry supplies are in here. And now we have two level benches for the bed to fold down. A lot of people remove the back seats. We were planning on selling our car as soon as we were done with this adventure. So we chose to just lay them flat down. We got rid of the headrest and we kind of tucked those away since we were planning on selling the car. This is the part we call the flip. You ready to flip? I'm ready to flip. Man, you have so much more room than I do. Look at that, unfair. The last thing on the bed is our camping chair. We only have one because one got stolen in Seattle. So this goes behind my side. And as Brandon said, I have a lot more room on my side. The passenger seat goes forward more. So this makes sure that the bed stays snug because it is cut into three different pieces. This jams right in here and fits perfectly with the seat and the mattress, giving that extra three inches so that the mattress has nowhere to slide. So we don't have a gap in between on our shoulders. We do lug around these four feathered down pillows with us, but it makes sleeping in this so much more comfortable. We also decided to get this mattress topper too to give us a little bit more support. And we opted for like a full fledged memory foam mattress from Amazon. Now for the blackout shades. We've mentioned these before. They're made from dollar store poster board and just black duct tape. We cut them to size and they fit really well. This one goes up here, we use a little clip jam it in there so that it doesn't fall out. We each have a front one and a back one and they each have a little fold in them so we can roll down the windows to get some air if needed. These things actually fit a lot better. We went to Las Vegas and we left the car in Bozeman, Montana with the window cracked and it was so dry. It was right during their wildfires that they actually shrunk in size, which is crazy. It only happened that one time and so they used to be a completely snug fit and now they're not. But for $12, it would be totally worth doing this. They lasted us our three months. They insulate, allow privacy, and they black everything out so that we can sleep comfortably. These ones surprisingly still fit, but we never really take these out because we don't need them for anything other than keeping the light out. Behind Brandon's seat, we keep four bug screens. These we bought on Amazon. I think they were 22, something like that for all four of them. They're super easy. They're just like little socks that go over the window and you can pull them down far enough so that you can roll the window all the way down and it's double sided because it's a sock. So no bugs get in at all. Probably use them maybe 40 nights. Um, we use them on rainy nights too because we can roll the windows down and it only lets a little bit of water come through. The thing is they don't breathe very well because they are so thick. You don't get a lot of airflow. So on hot nights when you want the windows down but no bugs in. I don't know. I don't know if there's a better option out there. For us, they worked fine. We also got these things for a couple bucks from Ikea. When we were at like a dirty campground or something, we will lay these out. We have four of them and we just wash them with our laundry occasionally. We'll do a couple like that and then one like this and then the same thing on the other side, just in case it's dirty outside so we have a place to land when we get out of the car. 
This is where our laundry goes. It's just a cubby there and I don't need any room for my feet. So that just stays there. This is our cooler so we can have some drinks in bed. Since we sleep on top of our mattress, if we want snacks or like dip or something that we're gonna be able to eat or beers or wine, something like that, we'll put a little bit of ice and we'll throw that in there and we'll just keep that up there with us. Also, we have this bag that just soars. We have two USB fans. This one we bought in Canada at Dollarama because I broke one of ours. Uh, wouldn't recommend that one, but this thing is an amazing. I think we got these on Amazon too, and they just hang up and this thing is super efficient and it runs on almost no battery and it really does a good job of cooling the Prius down. So you guys have seen this before. This is where we store almost all of our clothes. We call this the closet. This is my side. This is Brandon's side. We brought way too many clothes, so we've slowly been getting rid of some of it along the way. And we definitely will not be taking all of this to Europe. But we currently each probably have about 12 shirts and four pairs of jeans, including a pair of shorts. We brought too much clothes, but it's really good because we've only had to do laundry, I think like six times. So under the trap door, we still do have a spare tire, which luckily we haven't needed. However, once you lift this black compartment up, which is go. very difficult to do. Uh, there's a little bit of extra storage. We have the headrests that go up there. They're taking up the majority of this space. And then we also just have our winter boots, both of ours, for when we go to Europe. We thought that we were gonna need them much more often. They've remained there since we left San Diego 100 days ago. The last thing that we have to do is flip the foot of the bed down to make a mattress. In my side crevice, I keep a pair of pajama pants, a pair of pajama shorts, and slippers for when we're camping. My two sheets that I use for sleeping. This is like a top five question that we get, aside from like, how do you live in a Prius? It's how do you get in and out of it? So I'm gonna show you. Ready? I take my first shoe off. Jam's in the corner down here. I get all the way in. Then I take my other shoe off. Shoe goes under here. Take my glasses off, they go up here, my nice little cubby hole. Then I grab my pants, and I'm gonna change into my pajamas now. <laughs> Good night. I've never seen you inside like this. Look at how much room you have, it's insane. I'll show you guys how I get in on my side. It's pretty much the same process. I go in, I take my right shoe off, jam it in. <laughs> and then once I get here, I take the other one off. And then, close it. Just to talk about these fans one more time, mine goes in there like that. Uh, for the solar generator, this is a flash fish. We'll leave a link in the description. We love this thing. We also have a Jackery as well. So you just press this button and honestly, it gets so much cooler right away when we have these in. These cool nets we got on Amazon, they are Velcroed to the roof. They have not fallen, which is crazy. We keep lights up here. I have a touch light so that we don't have to turn on the car light and chance wasting the battery. Glasses, keys, I also have my phone up here. It holds our phones. I have a, this is a, a must have if you're camping, bug bite thing. Look it up, you need it. I love these lights that we got on Amazon. They're dimmable too. These things were 20 bucks for the set. We've charged them one time and we use them every single night. It's like obviously the middle of the day. That's the last one. And remember these used to fit completely snug so there was no light. But it is super dark in here. Like it's honestly like having blackout curtains. There's a little light peeking through, but it doesn't look bright at all in here, which is bad because we can sleep super late.
we're gonna show you guys how we organize everything and what goes in what Tupperware and or pillowcase that we've determined is a proper carrying vessel for our belongings. This is a $3 pillowcase from Ikea. Inside of it, where we uh, keep our sweaters. I have a Taylor Swift hoodie, a sweater that we both wear. I put this one in there and the one that Brandon's wearing. Another $4 pillowcase from Ikea. In this one is Brandon's clothes. He has a hoodie, some underwear, and all of his socks. This is a dollar pillowcase from Ikea on sale. <laughs> this one is our warm clothes. Somehow we must bring all of this to Europe with us, which is gonna be very hard to fit into a small backpack. But we have two beanies, two scarves, two mittens, two thermals, and at the very bottom, puffer jacket. The last Ikea pillowcase. This is my arts and crafts bag. Markers, crayons, envelopes. We should get these to match because we thought that we would be setting up the bed in some beautiful campground every night and having a fire and getting nice and cozy in there. And it turns out we slept on the streets of cities a lot more than we thought. So these kind of just get jammed everywhere. But all in all, three, six, nine, ten bucks. Cheaper than a bag. Next up is my laptop bag. I don't really have anything in here except for my laptop and the charger. And lastly on my side is our food. We have Ziplocs, we have canned food, tuna, oatmeal, PB&J, salsa. Also, if you don't know what these are, go watch the Mount Rainier video because these are $1.79 at Trader Joe's. They don't need to be cold. They're amazing marinated olives and they're awesome on a hike. These are Planet Fitness bags. We have our toiletries, towels, shower shoes, things of that nature that we need for when we go to shower in the gym. We'll empty these out if we're going on a hike, fill it up with clothes, hiking gear, um, food for when we're eating on the trail. This just has Alyssa's underwear, socks, and things like that. All right, this one is electronics, my Nintendo Switch, anything that we use to film. So at one point, these were both a lot more organized than they are now, but we're winding down, so we haven't been cooking as much as we would like. But in this Tupperware is mostly just cookware and things that we need to eat. This huge plate, we just got this at the Dollar Tree. We end up doing like communal meals and we'll both kind of eat off of this one thing. It's super convenient and instead of having to clean two plates, you only have to clean one. This is all the mayo packets, lemon packets, anything that we can find on the go. Since we can't really have a jar of mayonnaise or anything because we can't keep it cold all the time, we won't always have ice. So we rely on these that we find and pick up on the way. We always ask for extra sauce whenever we're out. These are dog bowls. <laughs> These have been just perfect to have on the road because they collapse and they take up absolutely no room. We have one pot for boiling water. We actually do our, our water for our coffee in this guy as well. And then just one, I think it's about a nine ounce skillet. So if we want to do breakfast, grilled cheese, anything like that, we can cook a lot of meals with just these two items. These are what go on top of the cooler to level it with the back seat. These were so hard to find. For some reason, there's no Tupperware that is three inches tall and eight inches wide. Everything was 12 by 12 and there just wasn't one that we could find. We ended up at Home Depot just scouring the aisles and these Husky ones worked out really well. They're way more heavy duty than we need, but they ended up working well. They were a little bit expensive, but at the time we had a job, so we didn't really care. These were $21 and we found later, like two weeks later, we found them at Walmart for 12. We just weren't looking the right aisle. We were looking in Tupperware and crafts and we should have been looking in tools. So in this one, we're starting with our cleaning. This is our mosquito nut. You've seen this in past videos when we're at campgrounds and we can sleep with the door open or when we're dumb and we don't know that there's bears and we sleep with it open anyways. And then this is our cleaning stuff. So we have a water, a soap and water, sponge. This is what we use to scrape the pan with. A towel for cleaning. This is a tarp. And then this we have not used. I don't Goodness. even know what's in there. It's 100 days, we've never needed it. It is the first aid kit. Everything in here, all from the Dollar Tree. This is from Amazon. You could have just gone and got fabric from Joann's or Michael's or something, but in the moment we were leaving our apartment, we just needed one, it, 18 bucks on Amazon, but it's huge. And it did the job really well. And it was, the holes were small enough that we never had any bugs get in. This started out, I know it looks full, 
started out completely full. I don't know why we thought we needed so much utensils. This is downsized a bit. These silver ones are my friend Kate's that I stole from her house in Missouri. She used to give us bags of chips and we would leave her house and they came on them. And she would rave about these and we were always just used hers. We had like five of them. And then we saw them one day at the Dollar Tree. They are colorful and they are amazing. A pack of 12 for a dollar. And we use them for everything, for chip bags, for bathroom stuff, for these window coverings, to clip paper towels, to clip napkins, to clip the bugs, to clip the mosquito screens, I don't know, everything. So yes, these might be the number one thing needed when camping. This is our Coleman camp stove that I almost always open upside down. <laughs> but this thing we can cook everything on. It just takes one butane canister that goes in here, clips on, and that stays in one of our Tupperwares. Closes, snaps into place, and then you light it, and you can cook anything. This thing is super efficient. It boils water very quickly. Anything we needed to cook, we cooked on this thing, and it was only $19.99 at Walmart. This cute little Tupperware is our snack box. By snack box, I mean like what we have accessible to us when we are driving because sometimes we're in the car for like four hours and we don't stop. We go to the Dollar Tree, I would say like every three weeks, pack this thing full with stuff that we want and then it goes right behind Brandon's seat. So when he says, I want sunflower seeds, I can reach up, grab it and give him some sunflower seeds. This is everything we own. And somehow it fits perfectly into this car so we can travel 14,000 miles across North America. Crazy. The crazy thing is, I think we could do with a lot less. Yeah. And the front seat. I keep my makeup and my tooth, I mean my makeup and my hairbrush down there. We keep our toothbrushes and our toothpaste in here. I have two umbrellas and a towel that stays up here just in case we spill coffee on ourselves. I also have warm socks and mittens because sometimes you need them. And surprisingly, I can reach it when I'm in bed up to this cup holder. We got these water bottles at the dollar store. You've seen us refill them multiple times. They aren't like refillable ones, they're plastic. We're gonna recycle them when we're done with them but they don't look as trashy as like the thin plastic ones. And these, they're empty right now, but they get stored back here. And there's surprisingly a lot of room to jam them all back here. We also have one reusable cup that we use and our beanies for easy access. So the last stuff for me, we have this Jackery. I haven't really talked about our power supplies, but we have just uh, this little guy. And then we have this flash fish. Uh, we charge those with the cigarette lighter port here, or if we're doing work at a Starbucks or something, we'll charge them in there. And this is more than enough power than we need. And they hold their charge for a really long time. So this just kind of hides down here. And then we also have the iPad that is slides down here perfectly. And so that charges. Uh, and then inside here is our other power supply situation. We have some headlamps, a lot of flashlights, some different lighting options, three port charger. So that keeps both of our phones charged and the iPad. These are just my sleeping shorts and my rain jacket that tuck neatly in there and I grab them when I need them. And that's a wrap. That's a tour of our 2014 no build Prius. Would you do this again? A hundred percent. Thank you guys so much for watching our Prius tour. Please like and subscribe if you liked this video and follow along with the adventure to come.